going on, Wolfpack Nation? We got a great episode for you here today. Uh, myself and Michael will be breaking down. What was that? Are we dancing? Michael, are we dancing? <laughs> Absolutely. First time Say in five it ain't years. So. Yeah, yeah. NC State men's basketball men's. back in the tournament for the first time in, what would you say it was five years, Michael? Yeah, 2018. Five years. Yeah. So um, you got your dancing shoes? You got them ready? I do. They're in the closet, right. but they're yeah. there. Hey, knock that dust off, <laughs> yeah, right? Yep. Knock that dust off. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, NC State uh, just announced about, uh, about two hours ago, I would say, two and a half hours ago, mm-hmm. that we are firmly, all right, uh, much to the <laughs> speculation of a lot of people out there that uh, are into basketball, much like myself, uh, we are a number 11 seed in the South region. Um, just give me your first thoughts, Michael. Yeah. Um Obviously, you, you, we match up with Creighton in the first round as a 11 versus 6 seed. Um, you know, if you follow me on Twitter, I, I put out some the case for NC State this morning. and You did. And, you, you hammered that thing home. Yeah. <laughs> I like to think the committee took a look at that, but who knows? I feel like they did. Maybe. maybe. <laughs> but I, I that was my projection, you know, that first or second 11 seed, not in Dayton. Um, and that's where we ended up. Um, we've got Creighton on yep. Friday. Uh, yep. what, what do you say? 4 p.m. on Friday. 4 p.m. Eastern Standard. Yep. yep. On uh, TNT on yes. the uh, CBS on the home of CBS Networks. Yep. Um. So uh, hopefully, hopefully people out there have that cable package still. Uh, I don't think so. I, I, I don't. I, I I I am going to be streaming it since I don't have cable, but uh, I have ways to get it. So. <laughs> um. But yeah, let's. We'll talk a little bit about. Uh, about NC State in the tournament, maybe just a little bit about the tournament in, in and of itself. Um, like we said, we do match up on the on the South region, South bracket, uh, 11 seed against Creighton, and on our side of the bracket, um, when we survive in advance, right? Since we yes. did coin that phrase in '83, <laughs> uh, we will be playing either Baylor or U.S. or sorry, University of California Santa Barbara. Yes. Uh, uh, which I believe is the school one of my friends went to. Mm. Um, I believe she went to one of those Cal schools mm-hmm. out there. Um, but uh, just, uh, you know, people, you know, we were talking about just a second ago, the, you know, a lot of people thought that we were going to be, you know, an 11 seed, you know, bubble. I mean, we were bubble-ish, if yeah, you will. Bubble-ish. Um, bubble-ish. It's almost like a bubble gum. Right? <laughs> but um, we we weren't in that play-in game. Uh, that, that honor went to Pitt. Um, yeah, they, and yeah, I think that was that was um, part of it too. That I I don't know, but I doubt the committee puts two conference members in the in the first right, first that's what four, I was or at least on the same side where they would, yeah. they would play each other. Because isn't there two right. eleven seeds playing each yes. other? Yeah. I believe. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Because one was uh, was pit against Arizona State, and one and um, no Arizona State Nevada pit plays Arizona Mississippi State. Nevada. There you go. Too many states. Yeah. But not the right states. States. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So, you know, we, we, there was some people, myself included, that, you know, reading all the bracketologists, everyone's a bracketologist nowadays that has a phone. Uh, I almost thought for a second we might have a wolf pack versus wolf pack yeah. matchup. I Could've mean, been. it looked like it might happen there for a little bit. Um, I saw it on a handful of brackets. But um, yeah, so we did, a, we did thankfully avoid the, mm-hmm. the first four in. Uh, which is always, you know, you don't want to have to play that extra game and then turn around and then travel to another site, right? Uh, wherever that would have been. Yeah. But uh, just kind of uh, your initial thoughts on the one seeds. Uh, anything stick out? You know, because we're, we're, on this episode, we're gonna talk a little bit about the whole the whole thing. Uh, we'll give some predictions, and then of course we'll obviously break down our matchup. But yeah. uh, we want to give you guys enough content out there because, uh, well, we don't know a whole lot about Creighton we've done about an hour and a half's worth of research (laughs) on them so uh we'll definitely do our best to kind of break that matchup down but uh anyway first thoughts on the on the on the seating as a whole anything stand out yeah um I think the one seeds are all pretty straightforward I think Texas who ended up as a two seed might have had a a good argument for the one seed over Kansas because they did beat them in the big 12 championship but if you look at Kansas's resume I think they had like 15 quad one wins or something yeah they had a bunch I think it was like 15 or 17 yeah Uh, what kind of hurt them for not getting the number one overall seed was their quad twos um where I think that's where Alabama or Houston uh caught them because uh 
because I think it was Alabama overall number one. I want to say Houston number two, Kansas three, and then Purdue, Purdue four, four was yeah. the top. And if for folks that don't understand how they do it, they really just go down one through 68, and then that's where they just seed you based on – on the the matrix of the um, yeah the bracket right it's not they don't go by like okay who are our seven seeds who are our eight seeds they just rank them one sixty eight and whoever falls in line that way that's yep. where they end up yep. um, yeah yeah because when I when I was looking at the brackets today there was a secondary number and I'm like what is that number and then they showed that where um, there was their overall seed and I yeah. believe state was forty two or forty three um I want to say know. I'm trying to think but, how, I think there's forty eight at large so last four would be 44 so 43 i think we were 42 so, uh, we were 42 or 43 yes. yeah. yeah 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 uh I, yeah i i believe that's what it was so again that's how we avoided the bubble um yep. and uh you know you, you know in today's world with everyone's reactions on twitter you know the one thing was like well how is state over clemson and you know just and, and you said it before you did a really good job just breaking down some resumes uh but the interesting takeaway from all of that is state was the third best no wait, fourth best fourth best acc team out of the five yeah right yeah. and it was interesting because we ended up being the sixth seed in the acc mm-hmm. uh so you know so that's where people kind of get their 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 knickers and a wad there where we actually are seated better than Pitt, and then obviously clemson didn't clemson make it to make it yeah yeah um I know. Do you have any thoughts on either of that? Uh, again, I, I just think if you if you read resumes and you read strength of schedules and as much as we hate the net and the mm-hmm. quads and all of that, um, I mean, do you think it was right? I mean, you think they got it right in that regard? I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's, you know, because people like to hone in on one metric. Like NC State mm-hmm. has technically had one quad one win one quad one that's right but you know we would have had two had we not beat the pants off of virginia tech and the win over miami the acc regular season champion somehow doesn't count as a q1 win so because it was at home had we wanted that on the road that would have been yes. a q1 yeah, yeah but even funny. at home it's like yeah come on so yeah, it's funny yeah you can't just look at a single metric even if you know there's some bad ones out there and um, you know, it's whole body work, like we said. I, I know Clemson fans are upset. I would be upset, too, if I was them. Uh, yeah. 3-0 against I mean, State. You can't, you can't lose to South Carolina. You can't yeah. lose. I think they lost to BYU, and they lost to a very bad Loyola Loyola Chicago, too. Loyola Chicago, that was the one. Who yeah, has been good, to but Loyola Chicago won, like, I think, single-digit games this year. Yeah. Um, yeah. So those are just games when you look back at it. Those are just games you have to have. Um, now, they, they say you can't make the tournament necessarily in – you know, November, December, but you can sure play yourself yeah. into a hole, and that's that's what Clemson did. Unfortunately, um, they handled us. It was we we had, you know, obviously the the bad matchup situation with them in the regular season in the tournament, but you have to go win the games you have to win. And I think the one thing, and I think this is still true, State did not end up with a any quad three or quad four loss. Is that yeah. is that a, still a true statement? Yep, still um, worked I kind of lost track at the end because everything just shuffles. Moves, um, yeah. But yeah. And the so, other thing with Clemson is they did lose those bad games, but their their strength of schedule was terrible. So you can't have yeah. both of that. You can't have a terrible strength of schedule and lose yeah. to those teams. Like NC yeah. State's strength of schedule was not the best. I think we were around 250, which is not great. But, you know, we went 10-1 and one in non-conference with our only loss to Kansas. So you yeah, took care of business floor. there. Yeah, on a neutral floor. So yeah. that that's what hurt Clemson. Um, Pitt kind of the same thing i think they had a same they, thing they had a yeah, couple had bad a really, losses yeah they had a couple of bad losses but um they had m- some much better wins than we did um yeah they they're they're just a team that fell apart at the end um mm-hmm. you know the last week week and a half of the season where they were the number one team in the acc and then they dropped all the way to Five. fifth yeah yeah they if so. they had beat miami that last weekend they would have been the number one seed in the acc tournament but they ended up fifth and that yeah. win against miami probably would have clinched well, I guess they're still in, but they, they would have been, gotten off of yeah. the first four in, yeah, or last yeah. four in, excuse me, yeah. So, uh, so the ACC, just kind of talk about the ACC yeah. a little bit. Uh, Virginia was a number four seed in our in our region, um, yeah. So, so they're there. Uh, Duke, your your ACC postseason or your tournament champion finishes with a fifth seed. Mm-hmm. Miami, your regular season champion with a fifth seed. So that's not something you, we're used to in the ACC. 
other yeah. than the last couple of years. That's kind of been a trend. Mm-hmm. Uh, normally, you're a champion either in the regular season or tournaments, usually a one or a two. Uh, yeah, so, so, that, so that's different. And then we've already just talked about Pitt um, coming in as yeah. an 11 seed, but is in the first or the last four in. Right. So I any think thoughts on, on any of that? I, I think, you know, like I think Clemson deserved to get in, but it's too – there was too much – too much of a glaring issue with that strength schedule to for the committee to justify it and then so i think five was the correct number um you know you also got unc hanging out there but you know they had one q one win um again that's kind of like interesting you had enough opportunities yeah and it's interesting too you look at a couple of opportunities had they won the game that that triple overtime lost to alabama they win that game they're probably in yeah um, and then there was another game um, that I was thinking about that day. It was a tough loss. In, like Indiana, maybe? Uh, Indiana, yeah, I, I want to say. Them. But some, some, yeah, some, there was a couple where, you know, um, they just fell a little short. And Right. Okay, well, all right. Hey, how, how did that NIT bid go for them Well, while we're on it? They have declined the bid. Oh, they have declined it. Yes. Mm, yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, we're moving on. <laughs> always always happy to throw a little shade in there. But uh, I think Virginia's got an interesting matchup with Furman. I think that's yeah. uh, that's two teams that play the same kind of watch paint dry on a wall. Um, right. That might be that might be the first one to 25 wins that game. Yeah, um, that's, a, that's a tough matchup for Virginia. Yeah, I mean, they're going to get a taste of their own medicine. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and Furman's one of those schools. This is the thing that's always interesting about the tournament. Those double-digit seed teams are usually very uh, senior or upperclassmen oriented, mm-hmm. and you're going to see that with the ACC squads. It, Drake is another team that I think is going to give Miami problems. Miami's dealing with an injury uh, that could uh, hamper their 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 movement in the tournament. Uh, Duke, I think Duke's going to have a, an easy time of it. If I'm talking ACC schools, yeah, um, they had uh, was it. Gate? Like, I can't remember who they had. First round, they have Oral Roberts. Oral Roberts. I knew it was one of those uh, smaller type schools. Mm-hmm. But Oral Roberts was a school that, you know, they has had, made some noise this yeah. year. Um, and, and they played some quality opponents. So I don't think that's going to be an easy, easy matchup for Duke. But I do think that they're they're catching lightning in a bottle right now. And, and I yeah. wouldn't want to play Duke. No, I would not either. Um, a little. They are 40 to 1 win the tournament. So that's pretty good. Odds yeah. if you're looking for a value, and it's pick. funny. I bet I bet if you had done that two months ago, it would have probably been like eighty to one or something yeah. like that. Like it, yeah. it would have been, you know, they they've just gotten they've gotten right at the right time. Mm-hmm. Um, so so that's a little bit about the ACC. Uh, we just you know obviously here at Tuffy Talk, we're an NC State podcast, but we also like to cover the ACC as a whole, um, yeah. just because you know when some schools succeed, we all succeed, right? Because it's all about sharing that money, at least for now, and the revenue, right? right. So the further these teams go, the more money we make. Yeah, but that, uh, no, that is that is a good point. That is, that's a, yeah. that's a real thing. Like, eight, yeah. like we got a big chunk of change from Duke and UNC making the Final Four last year. Yeah, so it, it sure. really it really is. Once your team is out, you really should be rooting for your conference. Yeah, yeah. besides no, UNC, I'll, 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 right? I mean, <laughs> I mean, I will do like a like under the table golf clap just because yeah. they're making me money, yep. but I will never publicly acknowledge that. <laughs> yes, but 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 I mean, the money is real, and yeah. that's something that you know we value, especially. Mm-hmm. You know, as the ACC goes, we're one yeah, of the they need least all they paid can out get. conferences. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Um, but uh, just talking a little bit about, uh, I guess we can switch over now and talk uh, talk our bracket, our yeah. game. Uh, again, we have Creighton out of the Big East. Mm-hmm. Um, for anyone that doesn't know where Creighton is, it's in Omaha, Nebraska. Mm-hmm. Um, it's one of those little square states in the middle of the country we call like they call flyover. Um, so they're the, they're the Creighton Blue Jays. Uh, a preseason top ten uh, that didn't maybe quite live up to their hype, um, but uh, they they were number nine in the preseason. But there were other some schools also that didn't live up to the preseason hype. And uh, <laughs> I wonder what those are. We'll, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, just uh, again, like w- w- we're saying, we're recording this on Sunday, um, March twelfth, and we've only had the brackets out for a little over two and a half hours. So we haven't been able to do a deep dive, but we wanted to at least get out some content this week uh, because this tournament will get going really fast. But any, uh, any initial thoughts, Michael, on, uh, on Creighton uh, that, you've, that you've done? 
Yeah. Um, so I actually, before, when we were you know talking about who we would match up with and being an 11 seed, I pointed out Creighton as one that I think could be a good matchup for us. Um, just for the fact that I think they are maybe a, a little... They're higher in the net than maybe they should be. Um, mm-hmm. They've got... In Q1, they're 3-8. and eight. Their, their three wins are, are good wins, though. They've got a home win against UConn, a neutral site win against Arkansas, and a home win against Xavier, who are all three yeah. solid teams. Yeah, um, and I think they played Houston pretty tough, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Creighton, I don't see them. Houston on their sheet. Did they not play? They played I Texas. Know, maybe I looked at so many teams today. They Texas, played. They played at thinking. Texas. Only lost by five. Um, okay, they played neutral site against Arizona. So their non-conference was pretty good. Um, yeah. Neutral site against Arizona. Lost by two there. Um, so they've played now some we, top teams. And now we do have a common opponent, and that's Butler. Oh. So we do. Um, so just kind of, uh, I looked at that. They blew them out both times. I think it was like yeah. twenty, twenty-two points each game. Yeah. Uh, so take take what you want from that. Um, probably not a lot. Yeah. Um, we, we did obviously beat Butler. What was it? I just, man, it was so early and it was in I the know. Bahamas. What would it be in like 15, 18? I, I think like it was that. around 15. Um, um, but with Creighton there, um, like I was saying, they only three Q1 wins uh, and a losing record in Q1 and Q3 and Q1 and Q2. So I think a six seed may be a little high. I was kind of expecting them to be a seven. Um so, so the committee put I think a lot of stock be, in the Big East. Yeah, they, they 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 gave the Big East. I mean, Marquette was their was their best team. They got a number two seed, um, like you said, Xavier, UConn, um, Creighton. So it's not a it's not a dud conference by any, no. any stretch of the imagination. Um, but certainly that was just something that popped out, jumped out at me initially. Only three yeah. Q one wins. And a losing record in Q1 and Q2. I mean, I know that's better than ours, but not much better. And right. and we barely snuck in, and they they were solidly in as a six solidly seed. Solidly, yeah. yeah, 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 exactly. Um, so just kind of looking at their at their uh, at their roster, they're a roster that basically gets all their points from their starting five. Yep. They they all average in double digits, uh, which is not something that state does. So you know, there's. There's something there, and obviously we don't know the status of Greg Gant right now. Um, you know, we don't know if Dusan is going to make a, a Superman appearance and, and show up in the tournament. Uh, That'd be so, nice. so we don't know. <laughs> it would be nice, but we don't know. You know, obviously what kind of contributions we're going to get from our bench because of that, right? Everyone gets bumped yeah. up. Um, so, so I would say that the benches are going to be probably pretty equal. So this is going to be a game where it's going to come down to your starting five for sure. Yep. Um, but their their leading their leading uh, point getter is their center Ryan Kalkbrenner. Um, he's seven foot. Yeah, seven foot, seven foot one, depending on. I've seen it. I've seen him seven foot, seven foot one in a couple of places. Yeah. Uh, so he's a big that. Hey, let's be honest. We've struggled with bigs this year, um, and I don't think that's any stretch to say that. No. Um, the one positive thing I will say, uh, he's only taken 17 threes on the air, so he's not going to force DJ to, uh, guard him out on the perimeter like a PJ Hall did. Um, right. So that, that should be somewhat, uh, encouraging. Yes. Yes, for sure. Um, but before we continue, I want to take a quick second to tell you about our sponsor, Flatlands Jessup Insurance Group, that has our whole world covered with agents in five offices throughout Eastern North Carolina to help you decide how much coverage you need. Offering policies for home and auto, recreational vehicles, commercial, crop, health, life, and employee benefits. They are able to combine options to find a comprehensive solution that works for you. Flatlands Jessup protects the things you love so you can spend less time wearing and more time enjoying them. Find them on Facebook and Instagram at Flatlands Jessup. You can also visit their webpage at www.flatlandsjessup.com. So please make sure to go and check them out. But he he is their go-to person, uh, yeah. so that's gonna be that's gonna be shoots seventy-one something. percent from the field. Yeah, so. yeah. I guess it is pretty yeah. easy when you're that tall. You just drop it in. Yeah, you just kind of <laughs> just let it roll off the fingers and into the bucket. Uh, he he is not their leading uh, rebounder. Um, their leading rebounder is actually a guard, hmm. um, uh, Baylor. 
Shimmerman, Shimerman, I guess. Uh, he's at 8.4 rebounds. Wow. Uh, they're a pretty good rebounding team from what I'm seeing mm -hmm. uh, on the stats that I'm looking at here. Uh, so that, you know. But one thing we do do well is our guards rebound really well too. Yeah. So that's something that we're going to need to make sure that we stay back and we don't just run up court on on a shot. So right. you know we we'll need to we'll need to make sure our fundamentals are there. But uh, I mean they're a very balanced scoring team from yeah. their starting five. I mean their their lowest two guys are eleven point nine and their highest is fifteen point four. So they definitely share mm -hmm. the, the ball really yeah. well. Yeah, and to go along with that, they're averaging sixteen assists per game, which is that, yeah, that's a big number. That's a big number. Uh, their turnovers were high, though. I saw like they were double digits. I wanted to say like I saw. Uh, yeah. Okay. That's it. That's important because that's how um, we make our money. Make our, yeah. Eleven and a half turnovers per game. Yep. So that plays in yep. our favor too. It um, does. It does. But they shoot the ball at a pretty good clip as a team. Mm -hmm. They're in the the like forty six, forty seven percent range. Mm -hmm. um, from three, they're they're average thirty thirty five thirty seven percent. Um, so not nothing that you know the lot like Clemson. I mean, my goodness, they shot over fifty yeah. percent from three of those two games, and I didn't think that was going to happen in Again. both of both games, yeah. back to back games, but it did. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, it like looking like they averaged seventy six point six points a game. I I, I have uh, see I have state here as well. Um, we're right around there. I think maybe a little more. Yeah, I want to say we're right around that as well uh, from a team standpoint. Seventy eight point two. Okay. So, yeah. So I think we'd like to both get up and go. Uh, that's a decent amount of points in in college basketball. Yep. Um, um, on that on that note, looking at yep some kind of the advanced metrics. Sure. Um, you mentioned uh, offensively, they're ranked twenty eighth per Ken Palm. State is thirty seventh. Defensively, they are ranked fifteenth, and State is eighty fifth. Um, so there's a little. And we struggle. We struggle with teams that mm -hmm. play defense. I mean, let's let's be real. Um, the other thing I'll throw at you too is if this thing gets into a free throw shooting contest, they're a really good free throw shooting team. They're around yeah. seventy eight percent as that a team. That doesn't surprise me. Yeah. So. Seem like a team. Yeah, for sure. So, I don't know. I mean, you know, and uh, much like the women's, and we'll we'll have an episode on them too um, coming out uh, on their tournament. Um, they just got announced here a few minutes ago. You know, it's kind of like Forrest Gump's mom. You know, you, you know, you never know what you're going to get. You know, life's like, you know, basketball is like a box of chocolates. And yep. so I just don't know what team we're going to get with State. You know, are we going to get that Jarkel Joyner um, to Quavion Smith 50-point outburst? Right. Or are we going to get where they score 27 points? Right. I, I just don't know. Like, it's 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 mind-boggling. Like, we, we have the ability – to play with anyone like look look at what we did with kansas you know in the bahamas we i think we lost by like five or six yeah um and then we get blown up by clemson in three games it's a 60 point differential in three games so i i honestly it's so hard to handicap this team and and yeah i know what do you, what are your thoughts on that i mean because like we don't know what we're gonna get we don't know which version of the team we're gonna get yeah i mean that's tough it's if i I think it really is the teams that play that pack line defense, stop the drives. That's where we struggle the most with the three yeah. games against Clemson and then the UVA. game against UVA. I, I really think mm -hmm. those four games, it was only two teams, but those four games were our worst of the season. I mean, almost and every like other game. nine percent of our losses. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, all our other losses were, were pretty close. Um, yeah. You know, you lost 13 at we USC. Lost but... Yeah. And we lost um, to Miami. We, we blew a lead. Um, and then we lost to Kansas. Duke, on a, on Duke a... was close. Yeah. Kansas was close. Pitt was, yeah. for as bad as we shot that game against Pitt, we only lost by eight. Six or eight, yeah. 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 So, yeah. you know, I obviously, like, like you said, we're recording this soon after. Probably go watch some Creighton, see how they play, see what that sure. matchup's going to look like. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so, I mean, I'm, it's in Denver, so we're probably yes. not going to get a lot of state fans there. Uh, it's a little bit closer for Creighton, um, so they'll probably have a little bit of an edge on their fans. I don't know how well Creighton fans travel. Um, they pretty much have basketball. That's really their bread and butter yeah. sport. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't really um, 
the brackets are so weird now. Like there's, there's like the way they used to do it is like everyone from your bracket would show up at the same location, but now they have like cross pollination of brackets where you'll have some like South games there. And I think there's some East games yeah. there. So I don't even know who's even playing there. Um, so I don't well, even know if else. you'll, uh, if you'll get like the one thing that I always enjoyed, I was, and I always love telling this story is I was at the very first game where a 15 beat a two that was Richmond beating Syracuse. Mm-hmm. And that was played at big Coalfield house up okay. in, uh, Maryland, you know, their old arena before they moved over to the Xfinity Center. And um, that Syracuse team was loaded, but it was the very last game of the night. Um, you know, Richmond had a nice little fan base because it's not far from College mm-hmm. Park, but all of the fans ended up being Richmond fans. And so it was like yeah. Richmond playing a home game. And, and that's the neat thing about the tournaments, right? You'll get fan bases rooting for underdogs or teams that, you know, they have a natural rivalry with or. Um, they just maybe hate that color. Like people start cheering for the weirdest things. So um, I always look at that as just kind of a like, okay, w- w- do you have the ability to get you know win over the home crowd or the home sure. arena fans? So, so you, you mentioned it earlier. Uh, Baylor, UC Santa Barbara is the other. Right, that's who that, we would that, play. And that that one's in Denver. The other uh, little pod that's in Denver is Gonzaga versus Grand Canyon. And then TCU versus the Arizona State Nevada winner from the from the first four from the plan, yeah. So, so yeah, n- it's really no East Coast cooking. No, there, that's you know, a lot of West Coast teams. A lot of West Coast teams. Yeah, we are the only outlier there. Yeah. Um. So that's interesting. Um. Yeah. I. I don't know. I. I'm just trying to find like any kind of like edge, you know, if you will, to to give our our our, our boys. Um. Yeah. I don't know. It's gonna be. It's gonna be. A, it's gonna be a fight. I. I, I definitely see us being able to win this game. Like I, I wouldn't. Like, yeah. Like it's not like some monumental sixteen-one. You know that's only happened one time. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I, I, and honestly, and I think we talked about this, and I know you've talked about this on Twitter. It was almost kind of a blessing that we got off that eight-nine line. Yeah. Right? Like it, you know, um, it's tough. The only one I, the only one seed that I feel like is really vulnerable is Purdue. I um, agree. Maybe that might just be because we played them close last year with our worst team ever, so I feel yeah. good about playing them this year. But yeah, it, kind of along the same lines that you know, the other like Kansas looks. Although we did play close with Kansas, we played we played them well, but that was earlier in the season. Yeah. Like again, like with we, we've gotten better, but I mean they've gotten right. We do right. on, yeah. So yeah, like you said, it's just better to avoid that. Um, you until know, you have to, even, even until if you really have to. Yeah, even like, if you have a little tougher matchup in the first round, you know, I, I don't, I don't hate it um, being on that eleven, not having to play in Dayton. That was a big thing because you know, obviously, right. that's just an extra game you get. The play. logistics of it yeah. just stink. Like, like you literally have to leave like tomorrow. Yeah, um, to play and, Tuesday. Um, yeah, yeah, or Wednesday, yeah. But yeah, yeah. I don't, I, yeah, I don't know which games they do which, but yeah. Um, but you would have then logistically had to just get to Dayton and then get to your your other site which mm-hmm. would have been which would have been probably Denver cuz you said that yeah. matchup yep, is, that. is feeding into there mm-hmm. and then um I don't know, know where the other one is feeding at I I I lost track of it but so let's just talk a little bit about the the south region yeah. uh, some more so we so say we we survive in advance we get we get to Creighton we get through Creighton then we probably are going to play Baylor yeah, um, you know, obviously, um, and then just looking a little bit further down, um, you know, you got Missouri and Utah State, you got Arizona and Princeton, kind of round out our bottom half of the bracket mm-hmm. um, before you would play the top half in a in a um, in a Sweet Sixteen. I'm sorry, no, an Elite, an elite eight. eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, who, let's go. I, who, yeah. who who do you like for? Sweet sixteen, so four out teams of our bracket. Out of our bracket, yeah, yeah. So I, I, I think Alabama holds. Um, yeah, you know, but you know they've got some other issues going on that we really don't need to discuss yeah. on this podcast. But you know, if for whatever reason that kid gets pulled, Miller gets pulled, you know, all bets are off. Right. Um, you know, so uh, I don't think anything's going to happen with that situation. But no, before, I think if Allen it would have it, it would have already. I, I agree. Unless something crazy, they something comes up, you know, right. in, in the investigation. But I, I think he's going to end up playing through. Um, so I like I like them to probably get to the Sweet Sixteen. 
Um, I don't know. Like, probably Virginia. Like, yeah. I don't know. I, Virginia's just an odd team. Like, their de- it, if their defense is on and they're shooting, they're unstoppable. That, but if they're not getting one or the other, they're in trouble. That's how they were the first team to lose to a 16 seed. It, that's Correct. the style of play. You know, it will yep. win you a lot of games if it's done right, but it leaves the margin for error very, very slim. Um, Correct. Correct. So, but if I had to get, like, I don't know, College of Charleston's been a nice story this year. Um, yeah. I don't. Getting in. I, I, like, if you told me Charleston beat uh, San Diego State and Furman beat Virginia, both those upsets in the first round, I wouldn't, wouldn't be that. Me. Yeah, I wouldn't be that surprised either. It, it wouldn't. Yeah. Now, it would throw chaos into it. And mm-hmm. We all love chaos and yeah. March Madness. So, again, you know, like we keep saying this, the bracket's only been out for a few hours. So, yeah. I, you know, these. These West Coast teams in these small schools, it's really hard to, you know, get a feel for them. Yeah. You know, unless you've happened to play them or they've pulled up some kind of big upset during during the mm-hmm. regular season. Um, I know nothing about San Diego State, I'll be honest, because they play like at 1 o'clock in the morning our time yeah. on the East Coast. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I this the, See, I will say the one thing about this tournament, unlike past years, is like, yes, you have Alabama – but you don't have that dominant team that we're so used to and accustomed to. Like yeah. number one has flipped, I don't know, times. four or five times this year at least, maybe maybe more. Yeah, probably. it's like, been Bama, teams. it's been Houston, it's been Kansas. I think it's, it's been, been Purdue. Purdue. Yeah, yeah. I've been. I don't know if Texas ever got there. I don't think so. Um, I don't think so. But it's been it's been four or five teams this year. So mm-hmm. um, you know, normally it's one or two teams, but the, it's it's gotten a little bit out there, and then. You, you've got teams that have just gotten on nice runs. Like your Penn State's had a nice run. They were mm-hmm. on the bubble like two weeks ago, and they got a 10. Yeah, um, which a nice showing. That goes back to the the committee not caring about conference tourney because they made it to the finals and barely lost to Purdue, but they're still a 10 seed. So. Right, right. Yeah. So, all right, well, let's wrap this up. But, uh, you know, obviously we're going to pick State probably one, at least one game or two, but – Realistically, do you have a final four that you wanna you wanna drop? Oh, a final four already, going that far? Hmm. I mean, go big or go home. All right, I'll go. I'll go Bama from our region. It's just mm-hmm. hard to pick against the number one it overall is. seed. Um, from the Midwest. Um, I'll go Texas from the Midwest. Okay, Under that two seed over Houston. Uh, West, you've got Kansas, UCLA. Um, I'll go Kansas there as well. Um, okay. And then in the East, you got Purdue, Marquette. I'm gonna go. I'll go. I'll go Duke as the five seed okay. in the East. Wow. Okay. I think they're playing really well right now. Yeah. And I think they're. Yeah. And, and, I think they've got an easy path. Like they play Oral Roberts. If they can get past Oral yeah. Roberts, Tennessee is the four seed there. But Tennessee Memphis lo- is hot. Memphis that could be a tough one. Yeah, Memphis That's is a hot team. They'd they beat Houston. Yeah, they're better than an eight seed. I wouldn't I be surprised agree. to see them beat Purdue. Um, yeah. Tennessee Duke would p- play Tennessee in the second round most likely, but Tennessee lost one of their best players to injury in the SEC yeah, tournament. Point guard. Yeah. So you know, if you told me it was Duke, uh, Memphis in a sweet 16 and then like duke kansas state in in the elite eight i i think they've got a pretty easy path there yeah um yeah so 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 my final four i have marquette out of that mm -hmm. out of there i i I agree with you what you said earlier about purdue being a vulnerable team um i i think they're a good team but i i also think that the big 10 is overhyped i'll be the first to say that you know um that you know they've they've been the they've been the the, the niche conference the last couple of years and they really haven't done anything in the tournament. Yeah, I don't think um, they had a fact, team make it past the Sweet Sixteen last year. Yeah. Nope. And then I mean, as much as grief as they gave the ACC, the ACC won their Big Ten matchup. <laughs> yep. Uh, eight to six without uh, state. Without state, correct. So, uh, so I just don't I don't buy in the hype of the Big Ten. Yeah. I think they've got some good teams. I don't think they're as dominant as they're made out to be. I would argue that the Big 12 is the best conference in all of college basketball. Yeah. Um, but that's just my two cents. So I have Marquette out of the East. Uh, uh, Rock Chalk Jayhawk out of, out of the uh, West. I think 
Kansas is going to be there. Mm -hmm. uh, I agreed with you. I think Texas is going to come out of the Midwest um, just because of that injury to Sasser at Houston. Yeah. Um, that's a big, that's a big that's injury. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then uh, Alabama um, coming out of our bracket. And I have said it all along. I think Kansas repeats. They're my national mm. champion. Okay. So Repeat. that's my, that's my, yeah, I just, I think they're too good. I think they, they brought back a lot of that team. They did. Um, and like, there's something to be said about coaching. Um, Bill self would be the best coach in the final, in that final four. Um, yeah. Now, Shaka Smart fair. is at Marquette. So he's a mm -hmm. good coach and he's been to the final four before, but I think just it, when you get down, um, and the tournament time and crunch time, it's all about coaching and matchups and, sure. and getting getting the right things in. Uh, so I, I think it's I think it's Kansas. Um, but another stat that I heard today was pretty interesting with Michigan State. Mm -hmm. uh, Tom Izzo, twenty five years in a row he's made the tournament. Wow, that's that's impressive. Like, and you know you have to wonder how much longer he's got. But yeah. but anyway. So those are our kind of our just our picks. Uh, this was kind of an off the cuff. Like let's put something together. Um, you know there'll there'll be more stuff coming out in the middle of the week. Obviously we'll be Got dropping a lot, a lot of, of analytics. Yeah. Well, yeah, this will we be in the past. Watch party. That'll be yeah. in the past by this point. But <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anyway, real quick. So NC State as an 11 seed playing Creighton on Friday in Denver, four o'clock Eastern on TNT. So make sure you uh, you know tune in and find that on your local uh, channels. Mm -hmm. But uh, that'll wrap it up for our NC State NCAA basketball preview. As always, uh, you know if you're not following us on Twitter, make sure you follow us at Tuffy Talk now. Uh, if you're not already subscribed to our channel, make sure you hit that. Make sure you hit the bell to be notified so you don't miss when any of our content comes out. All right, well, Wolfpack Nation, that'll do it for this round of uh, Tuffy Talk. We again, we appreciate y'all, and as always, go pack.